Time to talk royal matters, and there's none better than the wonderful Angela Levin. The reason that we're in 4K for, again, just a flood of honesty, and we love her. And, of course, you can read her stuff uh, all over the place. You can read her books about Camilla and, obviously, old mate Harry as well. But more importantly, we just chew the fat here most weeks here on Sky News. Lovely to see you, Angela. Thank you. Lovely to be here, as you know. Love it. So, uh, Catherine's not going to be going with William to uh, Singapore, I think it is, uh, for more efforts to do with their uh, their Earthshot project. Um, she says she's doing it to stay home with the kids. Of course, when uh, both don't turn up, the word snub starts being thrown around. What do you think? Well, I think it's awful to say that it's a snub. It isn't. And it's actually one kid. It's Prince... George, because he's 10 now and they want him to go to Eton, obviously one of these very, very smart schools, and he has to do an exam next week, exactly the week that his daddy's going to be away. And I think that he would very much need his mother um, and that's why she's there. She's there so he wouldn't get um, stressed. And I thought that's a very good thing to do. Um, it's got nothing to do with her feelings about William because she's there and they're very solid as a couple. And I think it's awful when people sort of use words like snubbing, which seems to be, you know, I'm not going you for a first certain reason. We had a row, I'm not coming. No, it's got nothing to do with that. It's because it's not easy to be a mother and work anyway, but it's certainly not easy to be a mother and try to make your home life as normal as possible and be a princess. It's really not easy. And I think she's she's right. In any case, it's up to her and what she thinks her priorities are. And it's quite nice to see that actually she feels that her children are. And one of the things that the late Queen Elizabeth, who was wonderful for, for so much, but she did admit that she ignored the children. She didn't do very much with the children. And the one who suffered most was uh, Charles. He was a sensitive child and, you know, when his mother went away for six months because then travelling took much, much longer. Um, and she came back and she just tapped him on the head and, you know, it wasn't enough and he was very sad about that, of course. So, you know, I think uh, Catherine has learnt through marrying um, William plus her own very stable close family that actually you have to do the right thing when children are young and she's spending a lot of time looking after young children trying to see that the beginning is so important that she's doing lots of things to help families who have got difficulties um they, they haven't got much money they're not very intelligent they're single parents and it would be actually i think completely wrong if she went off and left him alone and um uh, you know, when she's doing this to help children um, find their own lives through a very stable family. Yeah, look, I, I think it's good that she's there to uh, help her son through the entry exams to Eton, but I think we can both agree. Um, g'day. Uh, my kid's George, and, and he's going to be the future King of England. He's probably going to get into Eton. I'm just, just putting it out there. I reckon there's a chance that George might make it into Eton. Yeah, I think he'll get in anyway. They're not going to turn <laughs> away the heir to the throne. But if he's very nervous about yeah, it all and thinks he hasn't done well, that's an entirely different situation, isn't it? You don't want to make, it, make him scared of exams and not feel well because good that he didn't get decent marks. And I think it's more that level. He could get anywhere. They'd always take somebody like that. But he needs to go feeling positive about himself. Uh, Princess, the late Princess Diana made a big mistake by insisting that Prince Harry went to Eton because he didn't pass exams the first time he tried. So he had a whole year where he tried to do other ones and he just scraped through. So he was in the bottom of the class. And that, I think, affected him very, very much. You know, he's the second heir. In other words, he's the spare, which we know he's written about. And it's very hard for him to always be at the bottom. I think it was a big mistake that children shouldn't go to schools which they don't feel comfortable in and don't reach the demands. And we can see uh, from the exams what uh, little George can do. 
Now, also, let's compare again. So, Catherine, she's not going because, as you say, George preparing for this big stage of his life. But her old mate, Megan, of course, she had to be late to the Invictus Games because she was making milkshakes for her kids. Um, not quite the same thing, but you noticed a little detail. That if, if the great urgency meant that she turned up late because she's making milkshakes, the first place she'd go straight after these public engagements would be straight back home, right? Because apparently the kids need mummy to make milkshakes. But where did Megan go? Straight after the Invictus Games. Yeah, it was ridiculous and it's incredibly annoying and I find it very um, patronising that uh, people won't see through it. Um, to come ten, three days later, how does it long does it take to make a milkshake? Um, three days later, she's there and explaining she had to give her little ones milkshakes. That was obviously nonsense. But then at the end, to sort of skive off and go to Portugal for a secret lovey-dovey um, holiday is extraordinary. I mean, most parents who are away from their children for nearly two weeks would very much want to go back to them. They're very small, four and two. But, you know, if it's something nice that she wants to do, they've forgotten, it seems to me. And I thought that was such a lot of hypocrisy that it's really shocking. And the other thing I'd like to tell you about how she's supposed to love children so much. In 2021, she went to New York and she uh, wanted to read her book, um, the, the, what's it, the Bench, which is absolutely appalling, rubbish, um, to seven-year-olds in Harlem. And she chose one of the most poorest schools there. But she insisted that the teachers bought a lovely big new blue carpet and blue cushions so she could sit comfortably. And then she had a gagging order that every child of seven and all the teachers had to sign it to say they wouldn't say anything negative or unpleasant about Megan or the book. Can you believe that? Mm. How can you do that to young children? You're sort of silencing them. I mean, if you talk about free speech, Children need it more than actually anybody else, doesn't it? So that they can feel comfortable and talk about it. So they must have been very worried during the hearing of this shocking book um, about what, what they can and can't say about it. Um, it's stifling, isn't it? Now, if you love children, how could you do that? For seven-year-olds, beyond me.